In this video, I'm going to show you how I annotate novels. Now, the purpose behind this um, is the fact that research shows that the more uh, notes that students take, the more effective their learning is. And essentially, that's what we're all after, uh, the most effective learning. So we want to work smarter, not necessarily harder. So I'm going to show you how I note take. Now, the first part of that is I have a key. So you can see that yellow is language, pink characters, this really orange color structure and form, green setting, and blue is plot and action. Now, the reason for this key is that if I'm going to go to the trouble of taking all these notes, I wanna be able to easily go and find particular quotes um, that I can use to support any ideas that I might have um, in terms of an essay or an assessment or an exam. Um, now, what I'm going to be analysing today is George Orwell's uh, novella Animal Farm, um, and I'm going to be looking at chapter one. Now, whenever you start a novel, okay, you want to make sure that you're looking very carefully at the first sentence. So we have Mr. Jones of the Minna Farm had locked the hen houses for the night, but was too drunk to remember to shut the potholes. Okay, so the start of any story, we start with exposition. So exposition is where we're being introduced to important characters, it's establishing the setting, and potentially communicating some form of backstory. Now in this first sentence, we're introduced to the character of Mr. Jones. Now. Animal Farm is an allegory, and allegory is an extended metaphor, um, which communicates the sum of Russian history. So starting just before the Russian Revolution of 1917 and moving into Stalinistic Russia. Okay, so we're introduced to Mr. Jones, so that's why I've highlighted that in pink, and that's why you can see I've got this little pink tab here. Um, now, you can also notice that I've got, on this particular page, I've got a pink and a red and a, a green, okay? You'll also notice that yellow tabs are on the side. Now that's because I think that out of all the different things that I'm most likely going to be using language. So I put that off to the side. It's the ones that I tend to look up the most um, when I'm talking about motifs or symbolism um, that all is using, I'm going to want to try and find those ones through there. So I put that down to the side, okay? So, introduced to Mr. Jones, Pink, and we, know, we learn that he's too drunk. So we're learning something of his character. And um, we're also introduced to the setting, which is a farm called Mena Farm. So that's why that's in green. Now, the reason I've highlighted up above in this kind of ready orange color is that all employs a circular structure. Um, at the start of the story, the animals are mistreated by a cruel master, Mr. Jones. Um, who represents Tsar Nicholas II, the last Tsar of Russia. Um, and you'll note how I'm annotating on the side there in pencil. Um, when we get to the end of the novel, they will also be mistreated by cruel masters, but it will be the pigs who will be their cruel masters. On page one, we're also introduced to Old Major, who's a pig, okay? And he represents Karl Marx, who is considered to be the father of communism. Um, he wrote something called the Communist Manifesto, um, which is reflected in a dream which he retells the other animals in a speech. We're gonna to get to that in a second. Okay, now Old Major is highly regarded. Page two, now I just wanna point out that your page numbers may not match up exactly to all of mine. Um, there are many different editions of Animal Farm, but look, have a little bit of a hunt around, you'll have the basic idea of, of where to go. Okay, so we're introduced to the cart horses, um, Boxer and Clover. Now Boxer in particular is a really important character in Animal Farm, and here we have some information about Boxer. He was not of first-rate intelligence, but he was universally respected for his steadiness of character and tremendous powers of work. So look, maybe I'm writing something about Boxer in a particular essay, the way that George Orwell is using him, and I want to use his particular quote I'll be able to find character quotes here. Um, looking, using the pink tab, we're introduced to Benjamin the donkey. Now, sorry, I don't know if I mentioned it, but Boxer and Clover, they represent the workers. B 
Benjamin the donkey represents the Russian intelligentsia. Um, on the next page, we're introduced to Molly, the foolish, pretty white mare. Um, she represents the bourgeoisie. Uh, the bourgeoisie, it's still a term that gets used today. Um, it is middle class. So a bourgeoisie is a member of the middle class who generally is very materialistic. So we have Molly who is obsessed with lumps of sugar, obsessed with kind of pretty ribbons. Um, in today's terms, think of someone who's maybe obsessed with the latest iPhone um, or in terms of adults, maybe it's their new car or their flat screen TV. Um, we're also introduced to Moses the Tame Raven who represents the Russian Orthodox Church. Now, this is again a part of this kind of circular structure. Um, Moses starts off uh, very much... Um, uh, Mr. Jones kind of really looks after him. Then Moses disappears for the majority of the book and Moses returns right at the end and the pigs start looking after him. So again, we have that kind of circular structure. Okay, so my first little bit of yellow and you can see here's my tab over here, the word comrades. Um, so comrades is, a, is an expression used by socialists or communists. Um, and it's a term for any individual. Every communist or every socialist is a comrade. Okay, so it is an honorific, it's a title, um, and it really demonstrates this kind of equality and this idea behind socialism and communism that everyone is equal. Um, now he's talking about the strange dream. Now this dream is a really important part of the plot and part of action. Um, because this is where the idea of rebellion or revolution is planted. Um, now, this dream represents the Communist Manifesto that Karl Marx wrote that I mentioned earlier. Now, George Orwell has Old Major giving a speech and he uses the kind of the, the rhetoric, the, the devices that speech makers often use. I'm going to go through a couple of them now. Um, he asks questions. What is the nature of this life of ours? And then he answers the questions using declarative statements. Our lives are miserable, laborious and short. We are born, we are given just so much food as will keep the breath in our bodies and those of us who are capable of it are forced to work to the last atom of our strength. So we have that series of declarative statements where he answers his own question. Um, we have hideous cruelty there and we're now informed about whereabouts Minna Farm is. It's in England. Now, this is relevant as Karl Marx actually predicted that the workers' revolution would occur in England. Um, that was his kind of uh, theory because um, England had very much a, a class system and it, the Industrial Revolution had kind of started in England. So there was this real disparity uh, of wealth between people who own the companies and people um, who or factories and the people who worked there. Um, the life of an animal, and you can kind of replace animal with worker, is misery and slavery. Um, now, George Orwell actually came up with the idea from for Animal Farm when he watched a, a young farm boy um, actually beating a cart horse. So this enormous beast that is so much more powerful than the boy but who is just accepting the beating from the boy. Um, and George Orwell saw a real power that the, the animals actually had, um, but they were just very accepting of their kind of fate as workers. So here we go back into the, the questions, but is this simply part of the order of nature? Is it because the land of ours is so poor that it cannot afford a decent life to those who dwell upon it? So two questions, and again he goes on and answers it and finds his enemy, man is the only real enemy we have. Declarative statement, remove man from the scene and the root cause of hunger and overwork is abolished forever. So we have the imperative, this is the imperative towards revolution and to rebel. Um, man is the only creature that consumes without producing. Um, so again, this idea that man is the, the owner or the monarch or the noble um, who is becoming rich off the labor of others. Okay, now, all then foreshadows the corruption that's going to happen with the pigs. Okay, so one of the 
most significant themes, if not the most significant theme in Animal Farm is the corruptive nature of power. Uh, what has happened to that milk? Well, the milk being taken is that kind of first clue to the animals, which they ignore, that the pigs are not behaving to the, the precepts of animalism. Okay, they're, they're looking after themselves first. The pigs take the milk. Um, how many of those eggs ever hatched in the chickens? Well, the pigs take the, the, the eggs as well and sell them. And then the, the most tragic part of the story, the death of Boxer. You, Boxer, the very day that those great muscles of yours lose their power, Jones will sell you down to the knacker. And in chapter 9, that's exactly what the pigs do. Okay, so we have all, um, again, writing the imperative, do not adopt his vices. Okay, so this speaks very much to the corruptive nature of power. Okay, and he then goes through these vices, which will become the seven commandments. Okay, so really important right here. Um, we have the Beast of England song, which is a kind of regular motif throughout the, the novella. Now, as you're reading, um, what I want you to do is make connections between other texts that you've read or you, films that you've watched um, or your own life. Um, I also want you asking questions. Um, so I've written down two. All characterise Mr Jones as drunk and incompetent. To what extent is this a fair representation of Tsar Nicholas II? Um, look, I then went and researched that on the internet and it comes across that Tsar Nicholas II was uh, quite an incompetent ruler. That's the way that history kind of portrays him. Um, my second question was, what animal or group of animals most closely matches my position in society? Um, am I most like a pig? Um, am I kind of powerful and intelligent and corrupt? Or am I more like a sheep who just accepts the propaganda and just repeats it? Am I like boxer? Am I a worker? Am I working really hard? But I don't actually challenge the leaders above me, despite the fact that I'm quite powerful. Um, Am I like Benjamin, the donkey? Am I really cynical um, and apathetic and kind of see problems but I don't do anything to try and fix them? Um, or am I like Molly? Um, am I just obsessed with gadgets and, um, and glittering parts of my life that I don't actually care about the equality around me? Okay, so that's it. Hopefully you've been there, you've been highlighting, you've been marking your own, writing your own annotations, uh, copying my annotations down. Now, you'll do this for every chapter and I'm going to again do another video annotation. Um, but what I want you doing at the end of each chapter, okay, is to do word for a sentence. Okay, I want you to find a word that captured your attention or struck you as powerful. I want you to find a phrase, and remember a phrase is two or three words, that moved, engaged, or provoked you. I want you to find a sentence that was meaningful to you, that you felt captured a core idea of the text. So my word was cruelty, and this is obviously um, talking about the, the treatment of the animals, or of the workers from Mr. Jones, or from man, or from, if we extend out the, um, the representation of the actual owners. Okay, so I, I felt that that word cruelty is a really powerful word. Um, a phrase that moved, engaged, or provoked me, uh, misery and slavery. Really strong in terms of how horrible the lives um, of the animals or workers actually are. So I found that quite provocative. Um, and the sentence that I felt really kind of captured the key idea of the text, this idea of um, the corruptive nature of power, was do not adopt his vices. And tragically, that's exactly what happens. Okay, the pigs are corrupted by their power and they do adopt all of Mr. Jones's vices and they break all of the seven commandments. Okay, well, that's it. Um, I will, in our next session of home learning, there will be another video for you to watch on chapter two. However, you will have to do your own word phrase sentence. Thank you very much for watching.